Dragon Bots, Weaponized Hamster Balls, and Halo. All on Geek This Week. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Geek This Week. I'm X. I'm Brogan. And we're not going to waste too much of your time, so let's just get started. This week in gaming, Blizzard's Overwatch is receiving a brand new character, and it's... A hamster? The hero, simply named Hammond the Hamster, or codename Wrecking Ball, is another escape creation of the Horizon Lunar Colony, much like the beloved Winston. However, unlike Winston, this character seems to have some more nefarious intentions. The character's chassis, a giant weaponized hamster ball, comes equipped with two guns and a grappling hook. He can use this hook to latch onto structures in the world and, well, swing like a wrecking ball. And it looks like he's able to do some pretty incredible amounts of damage with it. The hero is currently live on PTR, so if you want to test out the hamster ball, it's available. Unfortunately, we found out that CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077 game is most likely not as far along as they led us to believe in their E3 presentation. Though the game has pretty much been in development for as long as we can remember, it seems that the game is still a few years out. According to CD Projekt Red president Adam Kaczynski, the game is still in pre-alpha, which explains why the demo was shown only behind closed doors. Though this means that the official release date for this game is still probably a few years out, we're still looking forward to what we get to see. EA and DICE hosted a closed beta for Battlefield 5 this weekend, and players finally got a taste of what's to come. Like most alphas, it was meant to help stress test multiplayer servers and get feedback from players that would hopefully help developers create a better player experience. Obviously, being a closed beta, information is fairly limited for those of us on the outside, but it has helped us get a better look at some of the weapons, maps, and game modes that we can expect to see when it comes out later this year. Here's hoping EA doesn't screw this one up. This week in movies and television, Showtime greenlighted a new TV series based off of the beloved Halo video game franchise. Similar attempts have been made in the past, usually to very little acclaim, but this time around, things seem far more promising. The showrunner is supposed to be Kyle Killen, who also worked on shows like Awake and Lone Star. The show is also set to feature other fairly big names like Rupert Wyatt, the filmmaker behind Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and the Exorcist TV series. Creators of the show hope to see it compete with current shows like Westworld, Altered Carbon, and The Expanse, a very ambitious goal. The network has apparently ordered a 10 episode first season, and unfortunately they haven't given us an official release date just yet. But news will come, and you better be here when we find it. Despite the seemingly endless slew of more MCU announcements that shouldn't have happened, we got another. In yet another confirmation that Infinity War is nowhere near the end, we have received announcement of a sequel to the Doctor Strange movie. During an interview, Kevin Feige, president of Marvel Studios, rather casually announced the sequel, stating, Whenever we do another Strange film, which we will do, it will be a number of years from the first Strange. It is likely we'll have to wait another few years before we actually get to see the movie, but it's nice to know that Infinity War isn't the end for our beloved Sorcerer Supreme. This week in tech, it is the time of year yet again to start receiving information on a new lineup of smartphones. Smartphone companies have a tendency to release new phones about the same time each year, and we are coming up on nearly a year since the release of the Note 8 and Google Pixel 2 series. Because of this, details of the new phones have already been popping up all over the web. Samsung has already started sending out invitations for an event taking place on August 9th, ironic, to showcase a new Galaxy device, and even though they did not specifically call it the Note 9, the images of a large phone featuring a stylus does not leave many guessing. Rumor has it that, like the rest of the 9 series, focus will be placed on reworking the camera and speakers rather than a complete overhaul. Unfortunately, Google doesn't seem to have been a whole ton more forthcoming with details, leaving it up to images to do most of the describing. Similarly, the Pixel 3 lineup seems to focus on improvements to things like the camera and screen, with two front-facing camera lenses and an 18x9 screen aspect ratio. While changes to the new devices still seem rather small, information is still limited, and I'm sure we'll get a bunch more info when these actual press conferences happen. OpenAI has created five artificial intelligences capable of playing Dota 2 together, and they were actually able to beat a human competitor. The company, founded by Elon Musk, surprise, surprise, 
initially trained these bots by having the bots play 180 years worth of games against itself every day by running the game on over 100,000 CPUs simultaneously. Now, having an AI learn to play a game is nothing new, but these AIs learned not only how to play, but how to cooperate. The AIs were pit against a Dota expert by the name of Blitz, who commented that the bots had learned tactics that took him eight years to learn. He actually managed to lose to these bots, and OpenAI is looking to put their AI team to the test against professional players prior to the Dota International Esports Championship on July 28th of this year. Be sure to mark your calendars, because this totally could be the start of the robot revolution. This week in science, space tech companies have developed new thrusters to make interplanetary travel more efficient. Until now, space travel has required the use of extremely large plasma-generating thrusters to get around by converting gas into ion clouds. The new technology uses radio waves to do essentially the same thing on a much smaller scale. The new method not only takes up far less space than it used to, but it is also a fraction of the cost. In regards to the more efficient tech, these companies have openly stated things like, we want to help put a spacecraft in orbit around every planet, every moon, every day, and the aim is to use our technology for the colonization of other planets and maybe probes to another star. It just seems like every day we grow closer and closer to a sci-fi utopia. Researchers at the University of Tokyo have created what they're calling a dragon drone. The drone in question is less one drone and more like a series of connected bicopters and is capable of reshaping itself on the fly. The design is based on traditional Japanese dragon kites. The test flights shown on YouTube show the drone reshaping into a square, a curve, and even autonomously deciding what shape to form to be able to fit through a small opening. The researchers eventually hope to have the drone interact with, move, and place objects by using the two ends of the drone like a pincer. They also hope to move into a multi-legged model reminiscent of Iron Man. And lastly, in other news this week, Colleen Ballinger, the personality behind Miranda Sings, has announced that she is 13 weeks pregnant. We'd like to offer our congratulations, and we hope everything goes well with the baby. And that is going to be it for this week, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and let us know in the comments if we missed anything this week, because I am sure we did. And with that, we will catch you geeks next, next week. week.